We're going to talk about surviving a Utah DOT audit and thriving through that audit. So from a non-CDL or commercial driver's license standpoint, DOT obligations under step one, the question is, do you conduct commerce? And two, have a motor vehicle or a combination of vehicles including trailers whose gross combination vehicle weight rating is 10,001 pounds or more which is the GCWR, or drive vehicles designated to transport 15 or more passengers or transport hazardous materials requiring placarding. And three, do you travel over public highways? The next thing to consider as a CDL, DOT obligated, step two, do you conduct commerce, have a motor vehicle or combination of vehicles including towed units, 10,001 plus pounds or more, whose gross combination vehicle weight rating is 26,001 pounds or more, GCWR, or drive vehicles designated to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver, transport hazardous materials requiring placarding. And then do you travel over public highways? Those two tests are what will determine what obligations you're required to follow. So here's some definitions. GVW is gross vehicle weight, base curb weight of the vehicle, GVWR is gross vehicle weight rate, which is a base curb weight plus optional accessories, cargo and passengers. The GCWR, gross combined weight rating, is the maximum allowable combined mass of a road vehicle, the passengers and a cargo and cargo in the tow vehicle plus the mass of the trailer and cargo in the trailer. And that GCWR is what we're looking at relative to determining the obligations under DOT. So here's just some examples of some vehicles. You should check your specific vehicle. This is just some examples. So you can see, for example, that a Chevy Silverado, regular cab, F-150, Ram 1500, the GVWR is up to 7,7850-6600. The uh, max towing capacity range takes two of these over the 10,001 pounds. So when you look at the extended cab or the crew cab, that's going to increase the total weight. And here's just another spec that can kind of show some of those higher rated vehicles. And you can see some of these are definitely over the 26,001 pounds. So look at the GVWR and determine um, what that is plus the trailer itself that you're hauling and the load of the trailer. So, from an insurance requirement standpoint, your auto liability limits need to be at least 750000 or if you're transporting certain quantities of oil, hazardous waste, hazardous material, and substance, then the minimum limit is a million. You also need to obtain the MCS 90 endorsement, or surety bond MCS 82, which guarantees that the insurance company will provide for environmental restoration for a loss, damage, or destruction of natural resources out of accidental discharge of toxic or other environmentally harmed materials or liquids. Now, just be aware that the insurance company, while they may guarantee the cleanup of the spill, they are going to come back after you, the insured, to recover the cost of that damage. This is like a bond. It provides the guarantee to the government, but it does not just pay out without any repercussions to you. So do you haul equipment for commerce that has a fuel tank, including a propane tank? If so, you need the MCS 90 endorsement plus a million dollar auto liability limit. So here's just an example of how you're hauling a trailer and you've got a unit in the back of the trailer that has a fuel tank and that that would be obligated under the requirements of DOT. So here's the form MCS 90 just for your preview. If you are obligated under the DOT requirements, as we've mentioned so far, you need to obtain a DOT number and you'll go to this web address in order to obtain that. You'll apply as a new applicant for your DOT number to establish that number. Once you register, you will get a PIN. Make sure you keep that PIN. Do not lose it. That is your mechanism to log back in as a returning applicant. You should check your account at least monthly to make sure that if a driver receives a violation or a bad inspection and does not notify the motor carrier to make updates and to ensure another motor carrier is not using your DOT number because you could have violations on there from some other carrier who has taken your number. Every 24 months you must update your account via the MCS 150 even if you don't have any changes. That is a requirement in the law. Use your PIN to access your account as I mentioned. Interstate carriers only fee, so there's an annual registration under the Unified Carrier Registration or UCR. The UCR Act of 2005 was passed by Congress as part of the Safety LU Bill 
It requires all motor carriers, private motor carriers, leasing companies, freight forwarders, and brokers that have registered with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration and indicated that they are going to operate in interstate commerce are required to register the UCR and pay the appropriate fee. So interstate commerce is going to be going across state lines versus intrastate, which is within a state. The UCR is an annual registration fee that runs from January to the end of December, and the fee is based upon the number of vehicles, power units only, that are rated for 10,001 pounds or more, nine or more passengers, or transport hazardous material, an amount requiring placard, and are operated in interstate commerce. The fees may be paid online at that web address. Click on Start UCR Registration in the upper right-hand corner. So we're now going to look at the decaling and the obligations under decaling for DOT-required vehicles. First, the decal displayed on the power units only, not trailers. The company name and DOT number must be displayed. Both sides of the unit must have the number and the name of the company in contrasting color and visible up to 50 feet and failure will subject the motor carrier to a fine for improper display. Now the next thing to worry about is the power unit weight registration and you'll want to contact your nearest port of entry for more details on weight requirements. This is applicable if your vehicle is 12,001 pounds plus you must display registered weight. Failure to do this will subject you to fines for improper display, weight display, or insufficient registration for the tax load. The gross laden weight equals the truck, fully fueled, plus the trailer, plus the load. State-specific, Utah requires this in this section of the code. Next, we'll discuss the accident register. You must collect and retain the following information for three years after an accident occurs. The time and place of the accident, the driver's name, the number of injuries and fatalities, hazardous materials released, if any, other than fuel from the vehicle itself. You must retain insurance loss history information for three years after the accident, and you must maintain post-accident drug and alcohol test proof for three years after the accident. This is for CDL only, so you can look at the slide regarding drug and alcohol tests. Driver qualifications. A driver operating in interstate or intrastate commerce must be physically qualified under this section of the code, including a medical card from a physician every two years, be 18 years old for intrastate and 21 years old for interstate transportation, or when hauling placarded amounts of hazardous materials. Read and speak the English language sufficiently to converse with the general public, to understand highway traffic signs and signals in the English language, to respond to official inquiries, and to make entries on reports and records. Have a driver's license that is valid for the type of vehicle driven. Be able to drive the vehicle safely. Know how to properly load and secure cargo. Not be disqualified from driving a commercial motor vehicle. Driver Qualification File DQ Checklist Every motor carrier must have a driver qualification file for each regularly employed driver and must keep for three years after the driver leaves employment. The file must include the following. Driver's Application Prior Employer Inquiry Inquiry to State Agencies, or MVR New Hire plus three years Driver's Road Examination and Copy of the Driver's License Medical Examiner's Certificate New motor vehicle record each time a driver renews the medical certificate. CDL drivers are required to be examined by a medical provider listed on National Registry of Certified Medical Examiners. Must have an annual motor vehicle report, review of driving record, and driver's list of violations and certification. Here's an example of the driver qualification file checklist. Pre-Employment Screening Program, PSP. The PSP is a screening tool that assists motor carriers in investigating crash history and roadside safety performance of prospective drivers. This PSP allows motor carriers to purchase five years of crash data and three years of roadside inspection data from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration's Motor Carrier Management Information System. Records are available 24 hours a day via web request. Motor carriers should visit the following website for more information. There is a cost to this program, but this tool is not required. Driver application, post offer, pre-employment. Here is an example of this and there is also an example of this posted on our site. You can have this example electronically. Prior employer inquiry. Inquiry to previous employers three year and the investigation must be made within 30 days of the date that his or her employment begins. The driver that is. Investigation shall include information concerning out of service violations, misuse of controlled substance or alcohol, and accident history. Employer must have evidence of at least three attempts to collect this information via fax, mail, or email. The previous employer is mandated to provide this information upon request. Here's an example of a prior employer inquiry. Part 1, the employee. 
Here's the example of prior employer inquiry, part two, the prior employer section to complete. Driver's road examination and certificate or copy of a valid CDL. The CDL is the driver's road test examination. A copy of the license or certificate which the motor carrier accepted as equivalent to the driver's road test pursuant to this section of the code. It's only required once. So as an employer hiring a driver that falls under the requirements of the DOT, even if your CDL or not required, this is what has to be provided. Here's an example of the driver road certificate that can be provided to the employee. Medical examiner certificate. A non-CDL driver must be issued a medical examiner certificate, which must be carried at all times and be renewed every two years or is required by the medical examiner. The CDL drivers are required to be examined by a medical examiner listed on the National Registry of Certified Medical Examiners. The carrier is required to place a note in the driver's qualification file verifying that the medical examiner is listed on the registry as required by the law. For both CDL and non-CDL, the examiner can reduce the time the card is good for to less than two years based upon FMCSA policy. The driver must certify the new medical card with the driver's license division and obtain a new motor vehicle record to be provided to the motor carrier. Annual MVR review of driver record and driver's list of violations and certification. Here is an example of the annual violation review record. You must review the motor vehicle record annually. Annual violation and review record it must be done every 12 months at a minimum. Driving a commercial motor vehicle. No driver is permitted to operate a motor vehicle when his or her ability and or alertness is impaired by fatigue, illness, and any other cause that makes it unsafe to begin or continue to drive a vehicle. Drugs. No driver may be on duty and possess, be under the influence of, or use any Schedule One drug or other substance listed in Appendix D, the federal regs, any amphetamine, or formulation of any amphetamine, including pep pills and bennies, narcotics or derivatives, any other substance that makes driving unsafe. Alcohol. A driver is forbidden to consume or be under the influence of alcohol within four hours of going on duty, while on duty, or while driving. A driver is forbidden to possess any alcoholic beverage while on duty, unless it is a manifested part of the shipment. Safe loading. No one may drive or require anyone to drive a commercial motor vehicle unless the cargo is properly loaded and secured. Railroad crossing and stopping. Motor vehicles transporting hazardous materials and most buses transporting passengers are forbidden to cross railroad tracks without first stopping and looking both ways. Additionally, the driver must not shift gears while crossing the tracks. Seat belts. A driver must not drive before correctly restraining him or herself if the vehicle is equipped with the seat belt assemblies. Emergency signals for stopped vehicles. A vehicle stopped upon a highway must activate the vehicle hazard warning flashers at once. The driver must leave the flashers on until warning devices are activated. The flashers must again be used while the warning devices are being picked up and before the vehicle moves on. Placement of warning devices. The warning devices must be placed as follows except where special rules apply. One warning device must be placed on the traffic side of the vehicle within 10 feet in the direction of the approaching traffic. A second device must be placed facing approaching traffic approximately 100 feet away in the center of the lane or shoulder where the vehicle is stopped. The third device must be placed about 100 feet away from the stopped vehicle in the direction away from approaching traffic. Radar detectors shall not be used by a driver in a commercial vehicle. A driver shall not operate any commercial vehicle that is equipped with a radar detector. Motor carriers shall not require or permit a driver to violate the radar detector prohibition. Fire extinguishers must be securely mounted to the vehicle. Prohibition against texting. No driver shall engage in texting while driving. No motor carrier shall allow or require its driver to engage in texting while driving. Hands-free cell phone. No driver shall use a handheld mobile telephone while driving a commercial motor vehicle. No motor carrier shall allow or require its driver to use a handheld mobile telephone while driving a commercial motor vehicle. The company should have a written company policy on these issues. Here's a written cell phone policy example. Property carrying hours of service. A motor carrier may not permit or require a driver to drive after 11 hours driving time following 10 consecutive hours off duty, the 14th hour of coming on duty following 10 consecutive hours off duty, being on duty 60 hours in a seven day period, being on duty 70 hours in a period of eight consecutive days if the carrier operates every day of the week, any seven or eight day period may restart after 34 consecutive hours off duty. Time spent by a driver in a compensated non-motor carrier position is considered on time duty and must be included in the 14 and 7 slash 70 hour rules. 
Example, a part-time position at a retail store. Calculation of the 14-hour limit includes all time except any off-duty time of at least 10 consecutive hours or longer, or any sleeper berth time of at least 8 consecutive hours or longer. Time card logbook combination. A record of duty status must be on specific grid or automatic onboard recorder, be current to the last change of duty status, have legible entries in driver's own handwriting, show month, day, and year with total miles driven, and total hours in each duty status for each 24 hours of record. Show vehicle number or state and license number of each vehicle operated during that 24-hour period. Have the carrier's name for whom work was performed and beginning and finishing times for each carrier. Here's a closer look at that. Property carrying hours of service. Short haul operations, CDL only. Drivers are exempted from keeping logbooks if all of the following requirements are met. They operate within a 100 air mile radius or 115.08 miles of the normal work reporting location returns to the same work reporting location and is relieved of duties within 12 hours. Does not exceed 11 hours of driving. 10 consecutive hours of off-duty separate each 12 hours of on-duty and the carrier maintains for a period of six months true and accurate time records showing start, end, and total hours worked. Total time for preceding seven days if driver is used for the first time or intermittently. A driver may extend the 14-hour rule to 16 hours once in every seven to eight day period, provided he has returned to his normal work reporting location and is released from duty at that location for the prior five duty tours and keeps a log for that day. CDL drivers time record. Drivers may prepare this report instead of the driver's daily log if the following applies. The driver operates within a hundred air mile radius of the normal work reporting location and the driver returns to the work reporting location and is released from work within 12 consecutive hours and the driver has at least 10 consecutive hours off duty separating each 12 hours on duty and the driver does not exceed 11 hours maximum driving time following 10 consecutive hours off duty and the motor carrier that employs the driver maintains and retains for a period of six months accurate and true time records showing the time the driver reports for duty each day the total number of hours the driver is on duty each day the time the driver is released from duty each day and the total time for the preceding seven days in accordance with the part 39.8 j2 for drivers who used for the first time or intermittently and the total time for the preceding seven days in accordance with this section of the code for drivers used for the first time or intermittently the driver may extend the 14 hour rule to 16 hours one day in every seven to eight day period provided he has returned to his normal work reporting location and is released from duty at that location for the prior five duty tours and makes a log for that day must track and retain for six months even if paid on a salary basis short haul operations non cdl only drivers are exempt from keeping logbooks if all of the following requirements are met driver operates within 150 air miles or 172.06 miles of the normal work reporting location returns to the same work reporting location at the end of each duty tour and does not exceed 11 hours driving following 10 consecutive hours off duty does not drive after the 14th hour after coming on duty five days of any period of seven consecutive days and does not drive after the 16th hour after coming on duty on two days of any period of seven consecutive days and the carrier maintains for a period of six months true and accurate time records showing start and ending times total hours worked total time for preceding seven days if driver is used for the first time or intermittently non cdl drivers time card and logbook Drivers may prepare this report instead of the driver's daily log if the following applies. The driver operates within a 150 air mile radius of the normal work reporting location and the driver returns to the normal work reporting location at the end of each duty tour and the driver has at least 10 consecutive hours off duty separating each duty tour and the driver does not exceed 11 hours maximum driving time following a 10 consecutive hours off and the driver does not drive after the 14th hour of coming on duty five days of any period of seven consecutive days and the driver does not drive after the 16th hour of coming on duty two days of any period of seven consecutive days and the motor carrier that employs the driver maintains and retains for a period of six months accurate and true time records showing the time the driver reports for duty each day the total number of hours the driver is on duty each day the time the driver is released from duty each day and the total time for the preceding seven days in accordance with this part of the code 
for drivers used for the first time or intermittently, and must track and retain for six months even if paid on a salary basis. Driver Statement of On-Duty Hours Motor carriers, when using a driver for the first time or intermittently, shall obtain from the driver a signed statement giving the total time on duty during the immediately preceding seven days and time at which the driver was last relieved from duty prior to beginning work for the motor carrier, as per this part of the code. Note, hours for any compensated work during the preceding seven days, including work for a non-motor carrier entity, must be recorded on this form. Vehicle Maintenance Standards Vehicle inspections, repair, and maintenance are critical to the safe operation of commercial motor vehicles. They are designed to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities resulting from unsafe vehicles operating on the highways. Maintenance standards cover systematic maintenance, pre-trip, post-trip inspection reports, and annual inspections. Trailers are vehicles with regards to inspections and vehicle maintenance. Vehicle Maintenance General Standards a carrier is responsible for ensuring that it properly inspects, repairs, and maintains vehicles under its control. A motor vehicle may not be operated when its mechanical condition is likely to cause an accident or breakdown. Parts and accessories must be in safe operating conditions at all time. A vehicle must be maintained according to the vehicle manufacturer's recommendation schedule or an improved schedule based on actual operating conditions and push out windows emergency doors, and emergency door markings. Lights in buses must be inspected at least every 90 days. Vehicle maintenance records, required records. For each vehicle a carrier controls for 30 consecutive days or more, the carrier must ensure the proper vehicle maintenance records are maintained. Each vehicle record must contain vehicle identification including company number, make, serial number, year and tire size. If the vehicle is leased, the person furnishing the vehicle must be identified. A means to indicate the nature and due date of various inspections and maintenance operations to be performed. A record or log of inspections, repairs, and maintenance indicating their date and nature. A record of tests conducted on push-out windows, emergency doors, and emergency door marking lights on buses. Where must records be maintained? Vehicle maintenance records must be retained where the vehicle is maintained for a period of one year and for six months after the vehicle leaves the carrier's control. Roadside inspection reports of vehicle maintenance records must be retained where the vehicle is maintained for a period of one year and for six months after the vehicle leaves the carrier's control. Any driver who receives a roadside inspection report must deliver it to the motor carrier. An official of the motor carrier is to examine the roadside inspection report and ensure that the violations or defects noted on the report are corrected before the vehicle is re-dispatched. Within 15 days after the inspection, the carrier must sign the completed roadside inspection report to certify that all violations have been corrected and then return it to the indicated address. A copy must be retained for 12 months from the date of inspection. Driver Vehicle Inspections Report the motor carrier shall require a driver to conduct a pre- and post-trip vehicle inspection each day the vehicle is operated. The following are the minimum items to be checked. Parking handbrake, lighting devices and reflectors, tires, rear vision mirrors, wheels and rims, service brakes including trailer brake connections, steering mechanism, horn, windshield wipers, coupling devices, emergency equipment. Here's an example of a vehicle inspection report. In the instance of drivers discovering defects, the driver shall sign the report the motor carrier shall repair any defect or deficiency listed on the driver vehicle inspection report which would likely affect the safety of operation of the vehicle. Every motor carrier or its agent shall certify on the original driver vehicle inspection report any listed defect that has been repaired or that repair is unnecessary before the vehicle is operated again. These reports shall be maintained for a period of three months. Before driving a motor vehicle, the driver shall be satisfied that the vehicle is in safe operating condition, review the last driver vehicle inspection report, and sign the report to acknowledge that the driver has reviewed it and that there is a certification that the required repairs have been performed. Annual Formal Inspection Annual inspections every commercial vehicle shall have a periodic inspection that must be performed at least once every 12 months. At a minimum, inspections must include all items enumerated in the Minimum Periodic Inspection Standards, Appendix G, Subchapter B, Part 396. Carriers may perform required annual inspections themselves with a qualified inspector. The original or copy of the periodic inspection report must be retained by the motor carrier for 14 months from the report date. 
Utah-based carriers must meet the mandatory state inspection standards, and these inspections are required to be performed on trailers as well as motor vehicles. Documentation of the most recent periodic inspection must be kept on the vehicle, report, sticker, or decal. Utah-based carriers must meet the mandatory state inspection standards. Inspector qualifications. A motor carrier must ensure that the individual is performing an annual inspection is qualified. The inspector must understand the inspection standards of Part 393 in Appendix G, be able to identify defective components, have knowledge and proficiency in methods, procedures, and tools. Utah-based carriers must meet the mandatory state inspection standards. Inspector training experience. The inspectors may have gained experience or training by completing a state or federal training program or earning a state or Canadian province qualifying certificate in commercial motor vehicle safety inspections. The combination of other training or experience totaling at least a year. Evidence of the inspector's qualifications must be maintained until one year after the inspector ceases to perform the inspections for the carrier. Air brake inspections, emergency equipment. Inspector qualifications, the motor carrier is responsible for ensuring that all inspections, maintenance, repairs, and service to brakes of commercial motor vehicles comply with these regulations. Employees responsible for brake inspections, maintenance, service, or repairs must meet minimum brake inspector qualifications. Emergency equipment, part 393.95, each truck, truck tractor, and bus must be equipped with a fire extinguisher which is marked with a 5BC rating or more, or two extinguishers marked with a 4BC rating or more, and three bi-directional emergency reflective triangles or three liquid burning flares. This is an example of a vehicle maintenance plan. This is an example of vehicle records including a basic service record. You can see that this can be simple, even handwritten. Date, mileage, and service provided. Here's an example of vehicle records in a vehicle record file, and you'll notice in the file that in indicates the year, make, model, and VIN, the tire size, the copy of the state inspection for 14 months, copy of registration, fuel permit, insurance card, maintenance plan, service record, copy of all receipts, and you must maintain the records kept for one year, DVIRs for 90 days. CDL Drivers Drug and Alcohol Test Title 49 CFR Part 382 Controlled Substance and Alcohol Testing Most drivers of commercial vehicles CMVs, engaged in interstate and intrastate transportation are subject to controlled substance and alcohol testing under the Code of Federal Regulations Title 49 Parts 40 and 382 Employers are required to have a program and procedures in place to ensure that all drivers who are required to possess a commercial driver's license CDL and who operate a commercial vehicle are tested for drug and alcohol use. The purpose of controlled substance testing is to reduce highway accidents that result from the driver. The purpose of controlled substance testing is to reduce highway accidents that result from driver use of these substances. For purposes of Part 382 and 383, the definition of a commercial motor vehicle is defined separately in each of those sections as listed below. CDL drivers drug and alcohol test a commercial motor vehicle CMV. Commercial motor vehicle has a gross combination weight of 26,001 pounds or more, inclusive of towed unit with a gross vehicle weight rating or more than 10,000 pounds, or has a gross vehicle weighting or has a gross vehicle rating of 26,001 pounds, or is designed to transport 16 or more passengers, including the driver, or is of any size and is used in transporting hazardous materials, which requires placard on the vehicle. This law applies to for hire and private companies, federal, state, and local governments, civic and church organizations, farmers, and custom harvesters, unless exempted from CDL, apiarian industry or beekeeping. CDL drivers drug and alcohol test. Continued. Alcohol is the intoxication agent in beverage alcohol, ethyl alcohol, or low molecular weight alcohol, including methyl or isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol use is the consumption of any beverage, mixture, or preparation, including medication that contains alcohol. Alcohol prohibitions. The alcohol rule prohibits any alcohol use that could affect performance of a safety sensitive function, including reporting for duty or remaining on duty to perform safety sensitive functions with alcohol concentrations of 0 0.04 blood alcohol content or greater, use while performing safety sensitive functions, use during the four hours before performing safety sensitive functions, possession of alcoholic substances unless transported and manifested as part of a shipment, use during eight hours following an accident or until driver undergoes a post-accident test, whichever occurs first. 
refusal to take a required test. Drivers required to have commercial driver's license are subject to pre-employment drug testing, a verified negative test result. Post-accident drug and alcohol testing, drivers must be tested for alcohol within two hours for no more than eight hours of the accident and within 32 hours for controlled substances. If testing is not completed within the allotted time frame, a written record stating the reason the test was not promptly administered shall be maintained on file. And this is the post-accident testing chart showing the type of accident involved, citation issued, and the test was performed by the employer. Drivers required to have a commercial driver's license, CDL, or subject to random testing must include more than one driver, use a significantly valid method, and ensure each driver has an equal chance of being tested each time. 50% of all driving positions must be tested for controlled substances and 10% of all driving positions must be alcohol tested in a calendar year. Reasonable suspicion testing. Supervisors must receive at least 60 minutes of training on drug and alcohol tests regarding reasonable suspicion. Return to duty. A verified negative test result must be received before performing a safety sensitive function. Follow up. Substance abuse professional SAP to determine a substance abuse plan to include at a minimum six unannounced follow-up tests in the first 12 months. Controlled substance testing. Employers are required to do a five panel test for the following controlled substances, marijuana, cocaine, opiates, amphetamines, PCP. Drug prohibitions. A driver may not report for duty or remain on duty to perform safety sensitive functions if the driver uses any of the above mentioned drugs unless prescribed by a doctor who has told the driver that the use will not adversely affect the driver's ability to operate the CMV safely. The driver tests positive for controlled substance use or the driver refuses to take a required test. Consequences and access to records. A driver who violates any of the above provisions must not perform nor be permitted to perform a safety sensitive function, be referred to a substance abuse professional SAP for evaluation to determine what assistance is needed, undergo a return to duty test for alcohol or drugs resulting in a verified negative result, be subject to unannounced follow-up testing after returning to work, access to records, an employer must obtain pursuant to the driver's written consent the driver's alcohol and drug compliance records from previous employers for the prior three years, a previous employer pursuant to a driver's written consent, a previous employer pursuant to a driver's written consent must release a driver's alcohol and drug compliance records to a prospective employer. Carriers must make all records related to the administration of their testing programs and individual tests results to any DOT agency or any state or local officials with regulatory authority over the employer or any of its drivers. Previous employer background checks. An employer must make inquiries to previous CDL employers for three years. This investigation must be made within 30 days of the date that his or her employment begins. Provide previous employers with a written consent for release of information. Investigation shall include verified positive tests, refusal to be tested, and successful completion of DOT return to duty requirements. Audits. Audits can occur after an accident, after a complaint from a current or former employee, or from a CSA score, compliance, safety, and accountability that is too high. There are 10 Utah state auditors and five to six federal local auditors in the state of Utah. Violation notices. The first offense, the average fine is around $3,000. Second offense, the average fine is around $10,000. And the third offense, the average fine is around $40,000. Or your complete company operation could get shut down. And lastly, fines are subject to DOT. If you have any questions, you can contact Utah DOT at 801-965-3871. And here's our contact information if you'd like further assistance. Thank you.